This 19th day of October marks a great victory in the American struggle for independence. The year is 1781. The cadenced beat of drums rolls ominously across the clearing that will henceforth bear the name Surrender Field. Combined French and American forces harried, maneuvered, and finally trapped a British army in Yorktown. The siege ends in surrender. American soldiers in their blue uniforms, French troops wearing dress white uniforms, line opposite sides of the road. Men of a dozen different nationalities assemble. Each is counsel to his own thoughts. Yet there are signs of strong emotion. Some men will weep openly this day. Others will display anger. By 18th century standards, the terms of surrender are harsh. British regimental marches are not allowed, and their fifers must resort to a popular novelty tune called The World Turned Upside Down. The British march with flags furled and cased. For the British, it is indeed a world turned upside down. Outwardly, it will seem that Allied joy and British humiliation lay hidden under a facade of strict military discipline. A few have chosen to deaden their feelings with too liberal a ration of rum. New uniforms bolster British morale for this agonizing march. German mercenaries marched to defeat in a war in which they were only hired participants. Some Americans cannot help but flash a broad grin or utter a forbidden snicker. But mostly the British marched solemnly between stern-faced French and American victors. Word of the American victory spreads quickly as hundreds of civilians rush to see a British army lay down its arms. Few realize they will watch a turning point in world history. <laughs> Meanwhile, final preparations are underway to receive the British at the field. A cordon of French cavalry is positioned around the area. This day will avenge American defeats at Breed's Hill and Brooklyn Heights. It will thaw the bitter cold of Valley Forge and Morristown and ease the painful memory of such disasters as Camden and Charleston. Militia in hunting shirts and makeshift uniforms assemble. They are farmers, shopkeepers, and tradesmen turned soldiers, welded together by an ill-defined cause called liberty. They are an army of ragtag warriors today. Tomorrow they become citizens, struggling to create a constitution and a system of state and federal laws. 
For some, Yorktown is but a promise. They will struggle for two centuries more before achieving their full measure of freedom. The French who have earned their share of this victory have fought hard for American freedom. Soon in the bloodied streets of Paris, they will seek their own independence. And still they gather, civilians and troops alike. Good. An 18th century custom had musicians dressed in reverse regimental colors. Thus, some colonials wore red. It is ironic that America began at Jamestown, not 20 miles from this field. Yorktown will not end the war, but it will forever remain a symbol of the end of the colonial experience. Yorktown also marks a beginning from this day and this place will flow a new vision of men to have of themselves and the governments they devise. These are men who fought to protect their liberty, not to build some new and different system of government. They will leave this field to erect an independent America, founded on the belief that the purpose of government is to protect the freedom of its citizens. A constant stream of redcoats pours onto the field, replacing those troops who have already surrendered. Round your, Round your firelocks. Throughout the day, countless British officers bark out the hated command. Ground your... Ground your... Firelocks. Firelocks. Some Englishmen will remain in America to share in the freedom won so dearly by their former enemies. Many of the British who returned to England will come to believe that this surrender to an army of farmers and merchants has saved the empire from tyranny. Here too, the seed of self-determination will take root and flourish. Many of the Germans surrendering under the British defeat will weigh a life of freedom in America against returning home to a feudal state, to a prince who might again auction their services and their lives for a few pieces of silver. surrender at Yorktown, there flows a single idea that men need not abandon their fate to governments they cannot control. It is a simple idea, and yet two centuries later, 
It continues to capture the imagination of people everywhere. Whether by peaceful evolution or bloody acceptance, the idea will not die. Often it must be reasserted and the struggle refought. But the idea remains that men are and of right ought to be free.